everybody. First thing here is our uh, Gambro Barn Creamery. Behind me, I've got these four steaks. We just left the ranch. We're on the road. We're driving two miles down the road to the Creamery building, and they're putting trusses up right now. So I want to go over there and see how that's going. Make sure, make sure everyone's working hard. So that's on 14 acres in town that we got along the main highway because the ranch is kind of off the beaten path. You know, we talk about the dairy. We talk about the Creamery. So the dairy is where the actual cows will live here at the ranch. That's where we'll be milking them, harvesting the milk, and then the creamery will have some cattle there, but it'll be mainly, that building is just for the processing of the milk. Where we're turning raw milk into cream, into buttermilk, into butter, ice cream, cottage cheese, eggnog, you name it. So this is more of a, uh, a processing facility. It's gonna be inspected by the uh, by the local agencies and federal agencies so it's a pretty big deal for us and we are learning a lot let me put it that way and one of the ideas we have for the creamery is that we will have a couple of what we call action windows from the outside looking in where people coming to pick up their farm products they can peek in the window and we'll be in there making different dairy products every day. We'll probably have one day we're making mozzarella, one day we're making chocolate milk, and we'll just kind of rotate through those days. So that'll be fun for people to, to go in there and just be more connected with their food, see how it's made, see where it's coming from. You know, it's just all right here within two miles. You see the cows being born, you see the cows being milked. Uh, you see the milk coming into the creamery and purchased right there and, and sometimes consumed right there. Very excited about it. The community is very excited about it. We, haven't ha we don't have anything like this anywhere near our little valley. It's a big deal. I'm also at, almost out of gas, so hopefully we make it. Hannah is very good about leaving the cars all on empty. You know, Hannah's one of these people that likes to push it to the limit, bless her heart. I'm just gonna go to the gas station first so we don't run out mid mid drive here like most people farmers love apple pay because one less thing we have to lose out in the lose out in the field can't tell me tell you how many times i've lost my wallet while riding a horse and i don't find it sometimes a year or two years has gone by and someone will bring it out from the field and say look what i found can't believe we didn't run out I have a little like gasoline tank at the farm that holds whatever, 500 gallons, but the dang pump is always breaking on me, so I find myself having to drive to town. <laughs> on the road again, going places that I've never been, doing things that I may never do again. We're on the road again. Looks like they got a truss in the air right now. Carlos! Up, how's it going? I'm good. You liking the project? Oh yeah. It's fun, right? I'm different. Excited. Yeah, oh yeah. A lot of different than what I do, but it's fun. Good. I'm willing to. So no problems. Everything's no. going good. So we're using the crane to set these trusses. So again, this is called the Gambrel um, roof barn. And that is just meaning that's the shape. You know, you've got these this two-tiered type of roof. There's lots of different roof types. There's more of a rounded roof. There's more of just a standard, what do you call like a bank barn or um, standard slope roof. This one here in our valley is a very traditional slope. A lot of the old dairy farms had it. Uh, that's why we're attracted to it. You'll see a number of them here. They're very uh, cool looking. They're old. They hold up really well. And with our high snow accumulation here in the winters, it gives the snow plenty of opportunity to get off the roof, get that heavy weight off your building. Um, so this is what we're looking into right now. It's sitting on the ground. Obviously this is gonna be raised up uh, 12 feet in the air. But what we're actually looking into is the second floor. So this squared off area here, we're gonna have a staircase that comes up into the second floor and so we'll be able to get up there and, and have storage up there for our milk um, cartons, our, um, our, our bags of uh, packaging and things like that. And we'll actually have an exterior barn door from the second floor 
that we can load pallets of our creamery items into the second floor from the exterior. So that'll, that'll be our elevator with just the farm tractor loading stuff into the second floor. And then inside we'll just have a basic, um, you know, staircase. So in all of our other barns, um, we've been able to get to this point, which is standing the trusses up in the center of the barn um, without having to use a crane. But these specific trusses, they're so tall and they're so, you know, differently shaped that we actually needed to use this truss right here to set every single um, truss. So on this, this is a 90 foot long building. There is a truss, a truss every two feet. Um, so 45 trusses is what they've had to set here every single one by crane. So this is day two, they've been on it. And they still have some work to do. We have these cool little peaks that will come off the corner of the building that you know back then farmers would use. Uh, if you imagine this, the outer rim of the, of the barn, they had a peak that would come over and they would actually have like a pulley or a little crane that they could use that to lift things up and then stow it away into that second loft area of the barn. And though we won't be using that as a pulley system because we'll have the tractor, We'll, we're still going to have the the out um, outcropping there because it's historically what you would have done and looks great. Like that one, Tosh sent it at the pole. Oh. So it got to be up there. Oh. So I'm going to make sections like this is one section. Okay. And then I'm going to put the plywood here when it's down. Okay. It's safer. Okay. And then put it on after. And then he's going to raise the whole thing and then we're going to do the one on top. Okay. But it's only one little piece of plywood. Okay. On this roof, we're going to, it's going to have OSB, it's going to have Tyvek, and then the roof on top. And so it's just much easier to do all that, why this is still on the ground, rather than once it's up in the, up in the air and you're having to be up, up way high and using all your you know, safety cables and things like that. So while it's on the ground, they're just going to start working on the roof, working on all this stuff, and lift it up once it's all done. So that's the strategy here. This is how tall the second story will be. You can imagine we standing. We're still have to put the floor on this. So imagine, I don't know, another inch and a half for the floor, two inches. So you still got plenty of height up here. It's not gonna feel short. You won't be slumping down up here in the loft looking, to, looking for milk cartons or things like that. So pretty cool. It's called an attic truss. So an attic truss, they, they strengthen it above and on the side so that you don't have any, any wood coming across your usable area up here in the attic. So on this side, this is where I imagine that we'll be like with the tractor or the telehandler, I'll be loading pallets on the second floor. How wide you want those doors there? Uh, I think that whole width right there. Yeah, since you're gonna have the pallets. Yeah, pallets. So I just wanna make sure when I get the pallet in here, there's enough room that I can get around the staircase on the second floor of the landing, you know, so I can, I can stack all the pallets on that end. I feel really good. I mean, this is a good crew. These guys, these guys are professionals. They do this all day, every day. They did most of this work in just a couple of days, you know. They've been fighting weather, moving snow, moving ice. I do come over here every day to just, just to make my, myself feel better, but they seem to be doing just fine. Over here, we've got these uh, two buildings right here. So these were the existing structures here on this, pro this little farm when we bought it. Um, in the front, they were using it as a workshop. In the back, that's a hay barn. And so what we're gonna do is we are going to fix up the building in the front and temporarily it's gonna be our farm store where you can come in and buy your milk and your eggs and your, and your meat and all that. And then this hay barn structure, we're actually gonna enclose it too, insulate it, just put some sides on it, and then we'll cut a door that goes through the little building into this big building and that will just give us some more retail space um, because these meat freezers and and milk freezers they they take a quite a bit of space so that'll be a cool little finished area that we're going to start working on on here in just a few days there's a little building someone left the door open so i'll go close that i'm going to take a quick peek inside I don't think that's moving. Okay. So here we are inside the new farm store here. 
Uh, again, this is more of a temporary thing because we'll have milk and cheese and ice cream ready before we finish the new farm store. Uh, we're still designing that building. And so this will be a cool little uh, existing structure to get us by. I think people will have a fun time coming in to this building. It's over 100 years old. And we're going we're gonna to fix it up nice, but leave all the character. Here on the back, this is where we're just going to cut a little hole in the back of this building and go back into that hay barn structure that we'll enclose and will just give us a little more space. Not quite sure where everything is going to go. We are just going to put a wood floor down on this dirt floor. And yeah, so here we are. A little piece of history. I'm just here getting the mail. I can't get the post office. Can't convince them to come down to the ranch to deliver the mail. But they said they'd come to my neighbor, who's about, I don't know, a mile and a half down the road. So kind of put my, my mailbox here out in front of their place, and they said that was okay. So farm mail. So this is the kind of stuff I like to get in the mail, you know. This is my, uh, my monthly progressive cattle edition. I also get the progressive dairy edition and forage edition. So just a little bit of light reading, you know. When I get home at night in front of the fire and just start looking at the different available bulls and, you know, all the new research coming out. Got to stay read up on this stuff. It's always nice to go over there to the creamery property. I mean, that's a big part of the future as we really focus on having a brick and mortar place. So we'll keep you updated on that progress, but things are going to start moving. This is my life right here. I got work gloves and diapers. So that's what I have most of in my life right now. Well, I'm going to get this mail inside, uh, see who needs my attention, and then uh, we'll see you next time. So we'll go do some butter now.